is my first mega base, and we've done some fun interiors, but some of our older interiors leave something to be desired. So, let's roll up our sleeves and get right into it. Alright friends, today we're backing it up just a little bit to focus on this area that has been more or less completed for quite a while now, but I realized I wanted to add a little bit more to it. So as I was finishing this area up, I realized that it really doesn't feel super tied into the castle. We come down this big fancy staircase with a lot of just like structure and grandeur and all of that. And then we come down into here and all of a sudden we're just like in a different building. We've got a couple of changes to make on this level. So we're going to start by working in this space and tearing down everything. All right. So now we've kind of changed what's going on here so that we have worked wood. I do like this. I do like this style. So now we need to go ahead and make this little nook functional. What this area is going to become is a little food nook. But I'm going to basically just rip off an Etho thing that I saw in one of his videos. Let me just double check this. Excellent. We got eight out of that one. So now the next thing is to just kind of add details and then other things that aren't going to be in the automatic dispensers. This is probably one of the biggest things that I've found while building this cave. Just this entire cave system is a little bit of stone bricks and like some mossy stone for good measure. Goes a big way in making it look like it is an intentional structure rather than just, oh, we plopped down some rocks here, you know? And there we go. That looks so much more structured already. And now we can add in like the fancy bits, you know? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the foods in here or potions that we drink like frequently or that we use frequently. So like this will be golden carrots cause like, Obviously, we use that forever and ever and ever. It's looking better and better. Now, we need to go ahead and add all the extra things, the things that we don't use as frequently. All right, so the side with more brewing stands is gonna have the actual like potion storage. And then this side is gonna be for like miscellaneous food storage. All right, well, that looks so cute and really works a lot better than, you know, our previous bed area. If we pop down into my storage room, I've been messing around with a slightly different gradient than the pillars upstairs. I still want this idea of like large pillars that have been supporting things and down in these areas, maybe they'll be falling apart a little bit. So there's places like, for example, here where I think we need pillar action instead of, you know, whatever we've got going on. All right, so that's kind of what they're looking like at the moment. I don't want them to be huge. I do feel like I want them to be a little dirtier, a little faster. And in the spirit of weathering things, we're gonna take like a piece of the polished basalt out and just put, yeah, the normal basalt in. I think having the cross beam kind of swallowed up by the stone, it kind of has the feeling of like when a structure gets flooded and, you know, the mud solidifies around the existing structure. And that's exactly the feeling that we're kind of wanting to go for here. And I think in this area, we'll do one more pair of pillars. Let me go grab more basalt. Wait, no, I have more basalt. So over in here, you can see that we've got a little bit of a structure that I've been building and that takes us through this passageway back into what is going to be our library area. And I'm really excited to work on that. We are just about there. 
So obviously we can't see the other pillar from here. But we've got that little beam going on. We've got this pillar. And then you come through and you see, oh, okay. This is like a whole, whole thing. Now we need to think about this area. Because obviously we've done like nothing back here. That little crack in the mountain is where we've been flying in and out. It's just past the edge of the snow and ice. But I think that we need to basically mirror the entrance from the other side. And if we kind of open this up, we should be able to connect it to multiple areas of this side of the castle. So obviously we can go down into my storage room, but then we come up here, which goes directly into the library. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to start carving away at this opening of the mountain and figuring out exactly where things are going to go. I guess I'll bring you back when there's a big old hole up in there. Last episode, we killed a lot of withers, like so many, 600 in fact. And to flaunt my newfound wealth, it's been suggested that I make a giant cycling pride flag. But first I need to figure out the, you know, cycling part. All right, so obviously the first thing you need to do for a pride flag is rainbow it. So I'm hoping to make it actually a little bit bigger and wider than this one. Um, but for the sake of learning how to do a piston tape, we're just going to go with this set of colors. Um, and just one layer at the moment. So the idea with a piston tape is that pistons are just cycling a set of blocks around and around and around and around. So we should have like one block missing, basically, um, so that there is space for pistons to move. Okay, so now we can see that, you know, this piston has the first gap. We would want to boop, right? And then boom. Oh no! What have I done? Oh, I did it. I did it backwards. Okay. So now the empty space is there. So we push that through. Now our empty space is right here. So we push that through. That's more like it. And then the empty space is that at that end. So the doom. And the cycle repeats itself. There we go. So now we have a double row of beacons. And I think what we would want to do is... All right, let's just set up a really crude redstone line with levers. So, currently, we need to push the glass over from the ends. So, let's see. And that didn't trigger that piston. Excellent. And then, we push it all over one. Excellent. All right. So, I think this is the kind of timing that we want for our particular yes oh look at it go don't mind me i'm just gonna sit here and flip levers all day i'm not sure if i like the double layering though so we might change that oh that looks so pretty in keeping with the rainbow theme we're gonna go ahead and run our redstone lines on wool which is apparently one of the standard blocks to use for redstone so let me know what you guys use because i know some people use smooth stone some people use wool i use whatever is there and i would like to be a little bit more organized that would be nice now i am foreseeing problems already with this wiring but that's why we experiment right i know what the next problem is going to be yeah see how we only end up with one set of pistons firing and it's because with this type of timer basically the line for the second set of pistons fires before the line for the first set turns off there we go <laughs> 
They're flashing white. What is that? They need to have different timers, don't they? Okay. We're gonna watch it. Ooh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. I basically need to figure out exactly how like the math of how the timing works which like if you know me if you know anything about me you know that math is not my forte as is paying attention to detail so this should be fun all right well our tps is terrible and i don't think we can actually get an accurate read on this at this moment so <laughs> Oh, man. Maybe we'll come on when there's, like, less people online. I shall go do some research. And we'll get back to this. We are back. And there is a giant hole in the roof of our storage room here. We're going to be doing a little bit of mirroring of the architecture that's on the front of the base. Um, and I'm super excited to kind of finish up the exterior of the base, but not today. That's a next next time problem. But I've been using the motif, as you can see, from the staircase at the front of the base for all of this as well. So we have a double staircase kind of situation. The staircase going up goes right into here, into our library. And we might add a little bit more that way too. I'm kind of thinking of having a mirrored doorway on this side as well. Um, and that can be for things like uh, living quarters for, you know, all the rest of the people who come here is what I'm kind of thinking. And then this is going to have a fully completed wall. I think this is going to start transitioning into the cave area because I want it to open up as you come down and to just kind of start seeing everything. And then for most of the rest, we just need two more, two more materials. We need our, actually, I already have the box of packed ice. I am so low on packed ice, you guys. I have been mining ice for like my just late night grind sessions. And uh, just when you're building an ice castle, shockingly, you rip through the ice. I do love having, like, more pathing, but now I'm kind of starting to feel like I need to put a portal in here. That's definitely not going to be enough packed ice. All right. Yeah. So, basically, now I just need to take this side. Well, let's add in the trap doors as we go. But I need to take this side and fill in everything over here. Well, I'm gonna show you what's going on here in just a moment, but first, we need to stock up using our handy dandy new little food dispenser situ- this went- this went well. Let's take a little run up through here. And you can see we've got a lot of skulk action going on. That spot is what we need to work on right now. But we come up these stairs and yeah. So there's a couple of things to work on up here still now. The first is I need some sort of motif in here and I, I don't actually know what to do for it. The next is obviously this roof is not, not done. Now, I want to do something with, like, another star there, because that seems appropriate for all of the, I don't know, themes that we've woven in across this base. I have a single idea at the moment, and I'm not sure that it's going to be great. I think it works, if anybody has better ideas, though, because I'm not great at this kind of thing. Uh, let me know. <laughs> The rest of this front area we're not going to worry about at the moment um, until we do the actual exterior work. Alright, now we are going to lay out a little bit of a palette on the floor here. Ooh, yes. I cannot take 
credit for this gradient. I saw it in a build on Pinterest. The builder will be credited in the description of the video and if you want to see the build it will be up in my build inspiration folder on my patreon or you know you can find it really easily on pinterest too all right there we go that is the basic shape um and we're going to have the sculpt on this side and it's going to fade to the other side so that palette will get replaced slightly eventually. I'm going to go ahead and build this area up with Skulk first and then uh, build the gradient after it's all been laid down. I love what the Skulk Bane does to that. Oh, that's lovely. Well, all right then. It's a fantastic gradient. Now, one of the things that I think I want to do is I want to add a little bit of like an end rod chandelier there. Oh yeah. Yeah, these are the vibes. The floating and magical obviously it needs to be a little bit bigger, a little bit more orb shaped. And you kind of just see it coming over the top of the stairs. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Okay. It's no longer light level zero. Cool. This is just such a lovely little foyer kind of thing here. I love it. But in general, I'm really happy with the uh, interior parts of this. Now we need to turn our attention inwards again. Um, to this area. I've been thinking quite a bit about what I want to do here and how I want like this area of the cave to look and integrate in with the rest of the base because lore wise like this is a cave and they've just kind of moved in and used the natural structure of the cave but we need some things like you know pillars supporting the walls of the cave from the extra stress of the castle that's built on top. So I think at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse the work in here. Let's get her rolling and I'll see you on the other side. All right, well, I might have gotten a little carried away on some of the detailing. I'm not carried away enough on others, but we have not only our gorgeous pillars here, but also a cute little waterfall into our water feature here. We can get a better look up here. And I do plan on doing a little bit more cave detailing, but I think this is a really good start for this area. This is probably what I was the most concerned about and wanted to get some good work done on. And there's definitely more to be done. I have plans to be going through a lot of our caves, both that we've already built in and caves that we haven't built in yet, but are going to. And I just plan to like detail a bunch of them out a little bit, a little bit like this, you know, maybe not all of them have pillars in them, but things like those detailed stalagmites type tights those are tights water features like this even little things like this spot I, I have you know I want to do different things with them um I want to turn this space super 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 detailed so please let me know your kinds of suggestions for details for your icy cave systems 
Oh, I just love it so much. Like, ah, that looks so much better. As I was working down there, though, I decided that I don't really like the clay in this gradient. I think the clay needs to go. Yeah, I think that just looks neater. The color gradient doesn't look quite as jarring and weird. I have finally gone and done darn did it. I came in and worked real hard. And as you can see, we now have four layers of glass. Um, and that worked the timing out really nicely. And we've, I, I messed around with a bunch of timing and everything. You can see we have uh, kind of, are these pulse limiters? I think they count as pulse limiters. And if we flip it on, it gets real loud real fast, but you can see our beacon just cycles through a bunch of different like variations of the colors, right? So if you kind of like count count the changes, you can see it it goes just kind of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, up from the bottom. And let me tell you, it was a pain to figure out. There were many, many times where I ripped the redstone down and redid it all. I have a place that I would like to use this beacon, but we're not gonna put it there today. We're just going to revel in the fact that we done did it. I did try and experiment with making it zero tick, um, but I don't think that our server is quite reliable enough for that to not break. Um, so we have, it's a little bit more of a slow flicker through rather than absolute smooth gradient goodness, but I think it actually works really well. It has a little bit of like an energetic vibe to it. I do have just a couple more details that I want to add to the area specifically because the reason that we kind of made a back door here is to connect over to other lore nations, which are behind me and uh, don't have a lot of progress on them. But you know, and the idea is that, you know, trade would come through a couple of different harbor points and then come overland to the rest of the areas, the kingdoms and all of that. That startled me, oh my goodness. And so this back door would be a little tiny bit more of a service entrance. It's still very large and grand, right? But also being a service entrance matches up really well to the redstone that gets put in here that was like, you know, a later development. But I want to go ahead and add just a few things like some cranes and pulleys and carts and piles of boxes and things like that. You know, I know spruce is standard for like these kinds of things, but we're gonna actually try and use some dark oak. When in doubt, add more chains and we're gonna actually also add a smoker there here's what we're gonna do here we're going to add this and we'll grab some pieces of ore let's see what ore should we do let's grab lapis copper and diamond there we go and then the finishing touch we go there we go there, and there, and then we go boop, boop, there we go. That looks fantastic. I love it. Now, I do think we should add another one, and I'm not sure where. Well, that looks lovely as well. All right, we need to do a similar kind of uh, hanging platform thing, and we need to add a counterbalance. That definitely adds just a little bit of life to this area. Oh, back here, I've been slowly just like making an occasional tiny farm here and there, and I'm sure this is just gonna keep expanding. We're gonna make just a small little cart here. Okay, so our wheels are gonna be item frames, actually. I think that's cute. And then the cargo inside is gonna be some glowstone so that we actually get some light around here and then some amethyst as well that's cute 
in the spirit of aesthetic lighting, we'll add a lantern to that and um, we'll put some sea pickles on the floor. I love detail. It really makes things start to come alive. Which is obviously the point, but like, it just feels so nice. Oh, this is lovely. And I actually really love that you can't really see the small details from immediately just kind of being in the storage room. You have to walk around a little bit. And then you see, oh, oh, there's a whole thing here. And then, oh, there's like other things down in there. Obviously, there's... They look a tiny bit out of place at the moment. There's definitely more work I want to do in here, but we are so out of time for anything like that today. We did so much. This was an incredibly productive day. We've got all the interior for the back entrance built, both for the section going down into the storage room and for the area going up into the library. And we made such a beautiful little foyer there. I love it. We did some redstone, that was fun eventually, and I love the end product. And of course, we made this entire uh, storage room just look a lot nicer. And thanks for coming along on the ride, and I hope you enjoyed all of the different projects that we have, and I hope you're excited for what's coming next, because it, it's, it's going to be good. And a huge thank you to my Patreon friends, especially our newest member, Simon. Now your souls belong to me. <laughs> Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.